Happy life means being the best version of yourself all the time. Happy life means good vibes, good vibrations, great high frequencies, um, great weed, great smoke. Being true to yourself. And it's just doing what's right and being the best you can be every day. Smoking that weed, baby! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a way of life. It's all about love and the people and the community. And I don't know what else to say. It's There aren't words for it. That's how pure it is. We have some hippies out there. Hippies out there. Hippies out there. Hey, what's good, everybody? We're here with a super special, special episode of the Hippie Chronicles podcast, man. Uh, we got the man Shavo in the building from System of the Down. Shavo, how you feeling today? I'm good, brother. I'm good. Just uh, happy to talk to you guys. Thanks man, for we're, yeah, we're happy to have you. This was a this was kind of like it was crazy how this happened. I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought we was again uh, we was being pranked when we first got the message. Yeah. So I was yeah, like, man. "Hey, we might as well follow through. What's the worst that could happen?" But um, um, thank you. This is a blessing. You know, this oh, is man. actually a big recap for let's say a, a special weekend. We just found out that we won um, an award for best uh, cannabis podcast here in Arizona for actually oh, yeah. the first time. So uh, yeah. this kind of just highlights and congratulations, just, hell yeah, yeah, Amazing. thank you, bro. Oh, we appreciate oh. that, man. It just it. It makes this moment much more special to be able to get down and uh, sit down and talk to, to you about the brand. Um, I, I noticed you got your start 22 Red started because you're, you know, you're a cannabis connoisseur. And I can definitely relate to that. So I definitely want to be able to pick your brain um, on some things as far as like, you know, favorite strains, um, like what really, uh, you know, you guys plan to dial in or just even bring to the market that we can look forward to. Um, so yeah, man, thank you for coming on and sharing. This is oh, great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so for, for those of you that don't know, uh, you know, Chavo is the bass player for System of a Down. He's also the uh, owner of 22 Red. You, you're the owner, right? Founder, owner, owner, owner. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Gotcha. And um, yeah, Mo, you know, do all the marketing. Oh. Yeah. I, I help with the marketing and stuff. That's something that I've always been good at. So I said, Whatever I can do that we don't have to get an outside work, you know, someone in from the outside. I'd rather, you know, it's like any work, anything you do. If you can do it, you do it. I'd rather not hire someone to do it, you know, even in system. Um, I did the music videos. I never had done a music video, but I thought I could. So I just said, hey, guys, give me a shot. They gave me a shot. I did, a, I did like majority of the videos I directed and wrote and directed them, you know, and it's better than hiring someone and, you know, getting their vision and then them screwing up. I'd rather... Plus, I know my band so well, you know, same yeah. thing with cannabis, you know, uh, I know my brand, so I know how to market it. And I know what to say. One sec. Sorry. Hey, guys, I'm on a podcast. It's, it's my kids. They just came home. Bye. So, yeah, sorry about that. No, no problem. No can't problem. Say no like the boys. Yeah, yeah. Can't say uh, can't leave the kids like that. You know, hanging. Anyway, so, so, yeah. So yeah, so you you got into the cannabis. You guys were kind of uh, was was system was kind of I wouldn't say like just maybe on some time off when you got into that. Is that correct? Well, we've been on kind of like this like on and off thing because Serge has been kind of like you know doing his own thing and I don't know you know creativity differences between a few of the members. So we've been doing shows but not mm -hmm. really making music together. And I'm a workaholic, bro. I, I want to hustle. I want to work. I want to do things when I'm not doing it. I, I'm anxious. You know, I enjoy work. Yeah. I enjoy having a goal and accomplishing it. Uh, so, um, but it wasn't that it was more like the time was right. You know, um, I've been asked to do since Cali legalized weed in like, I don't know if it was all six or what. Mm -hmm. Since then, everyone's like, bro, you've been you've been such a activist for it. You've been so like, you know, your strains, you know, your shit. Uh, why don't you, um, why don't you have a strain? Why don't you have a brand? And I was always like the artist, you know, I play music, man. I smoke. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll do what I do. You do what you do, you know, give me some good shit to smoke. That's where I was at. And um, I don't know, in like 2017, me and my really good buddy, Mike wanted to start something together, uh, you know, because I had time on my hands. So we were going to do this lifestyle brand and it was going to be just like 
the way I dress mostly minimal branding, cool vibes. I don't like big brands, you know what I mean? So um, yeah. we're just going to do that. And he's, he, 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 he works in um, uh, apparel. He like, he's, he, he owns a company where say it's called Madewell LA uh, where let's say you're a brand, you want to start a brand, you go to him and you say, mm -hmm. you know, I want my brand to have hoodies, t-shirts, this, this, here's some designs. He'll get it manufactured for you all in Hollywood, uh, all in house, uh, you know, so I thought it was the perfect home for us. Um, Canvas came in because our third partner came through and he's an old friend of mine. He's actually a, a younger cousin of an old friend of mine. And <laughs> I knew he grew, but I didn't know at what capacity, you know? And that was another reason why I never got into weed like business because if I don't know the grower, I don't know who's doing what I'm, you know, I don't want to rep it. I'm not, I'm not, a, the thing about 22, it's not a celebrity brand. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I tend to, like I, I play one on TV. I don't, I, I don't want I, this to be a celebrity brand. I don't want anyone to buy my shit because they like my music. I want people to buy my shit because they like my shit. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, it, absolutely. Real. Real. I'm, I'm all yeah. in the culture. So th that's why it's not called Chavo something, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, I, it's 22. 22 means a lot to me. That number has been a part of my yeah. life's birth. So I kind of, that became the name. And then red is because I always see color with, numbers and letters and twos were always red and kind of it was one of those like or, organic things that just went down so anyways once i saw this third partners grow like actually when because my you know mike my, my my partner for the culture the the streetwear brand yeah the streetwear brand comes and says hey man well, we should go see his you know his grow it's 2017 they're about to go rack let's you know let's see what we could pull off so we go see his girl, bro, and I'm just like pff, floored. I thought this dude grew in his garage. He he's, <laughs> he's manning like the biggest grows and the biggest brands in LA. You know, okay. he was like the founder of like a certain type of grow that now it's a standard. And this dude's been doing it for like 15 years. And uh, so I was like, this I can rep, bro. If it's gonna be yeah. this in our jars or bags, I'm gonna, let's go. So it became a lifestyle cannabis brand. And that's how it all started. Now, now, can I ask you, because you guys started in California, obviously, you're also in Nevada and Arizona now. When yeah. it took, when it came to taking that grow and that process that you had set up with your guy in California and then stamping it into Arizona and stamping it into Nevada, what kind of, like, how, was that a smooth transition? Yeah. Did you guys go through some process or, or what happened? Battle, bro. Uphill battle, legally. This country does not know what they're doing. Um, every state is fucking completely different. It's really hard to get the consistency in every state to be the same. It's not like alcohol where the Bud Light tastes the same in Cali, in Arizona, and in Nevada. Right. They have, you have to have a separate grow, separate distributor, separate everything, licenses and shit. So I found through the CEO I hired, who's an old, who's actually my best friend's uncle. <laughs> so I knew it was like, let's keep it in house, you know, keep the people we trust, you know? And he's the and the dude's like very well renowned, um, you know, brand maker. He's um, he owns huge companies and shit. So I thought it would be perfect. I, I just never thought he'd be interested in weed because he doesn't even smoke. But I didn't need a smoker. I needed someone that knew business. You know what I'm saying? I'm the smoker. I can handle right. all that. I got that so, part. You know what I'm saying? And, and because of system and other projects I do, I didn't want to be CEO. Um, so when he came in, he's like, the only way to scale to other states is if we do this model where we we partner with a grow a distributor teach them our way give them our genetics give them our our uh, branding and have them do what we do in cali and you know kind of mimic the thing the same in every state and that's the only way until it becomes federal where we can have hubs and we can distribute through right. hubs. like we'll be like two we'll have one of the east one in the west and and they'll distribute throughout the states which is the dream at some point hopefully we can pull that off so because of that <laughs> well um we went through many grows, many distributors, Arizona, but we're lucky, man. The distributors we got there, Flow Distro, they're amazing. Brad, the owner, the worker, Steve, Alex, Gus, all of them. I want to give them major shout outs because they're like our exemplary. Even Cali took a dive when the market dropped. But they, even through the market dropping, are pulling it off, really standing for us. They are 22 red. And I just want to give them all the love they deserve, bro. Um, oh, yeah. ups to flow distro, Brad, like I said, all of them, Steve, Alex, Gus. Uh, so anyways, having said that, 
uh, it's been hard. Uh, in Nevada, we went through two so far. We're in the second one, and we're all our stuff was in quarantine. We're gonna redrop there in June because our we checked on our girl. I threw a secret shopper out there because you know I can't be there every day, and I realized they're putting different shit in our jars, bro. They're I not our genetics. I had secret shoppers going, and they're like, "Is this your shit?" I'm like, "That is not my shit." So I went in, and we had a big blowout. I'm not gonna mention who it was, but you could do research. <laughs> I, yeah, you know, we will. Yeah, the bus, but they deserve to get thrown under the bus, anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some just you know, crooks, bro. And um, so we moved to a nice spot, smaller grow, more boutique. They're down to do what we want, you know, and and they're in the same mind state as me, where their culture, for example, I gave them genetics, they didn't right away plant them, they threw them into quarantine for seven, eight months, making sure they're good plants and they're not going to destroy the rest of their crop, you know, and they're yeah. building. Yeah. Yeah. Long story short, bro, you're at to answer your question. It's a tough move, but we're doing it. And uh, it just, it takes harder work. You need to be like, like I said, you need to throw secret shoppers out there. You got to make sure people go out there and like report to you, let you know what is going on. Or else if you're like any other celebrity, you're never going to do well because everyone <laughs> has their name on it and says go. And then they throw this poop and bags and put their name on it and they hold it in a couple of Instagram pictures and it's over. And they, they just collect. It's I've, been, I've been doing this three, four, four years now. I haven't collected. All my money goes right back into the brand. I'm building the brand. I'm not trying to make a buck at the moment. I'm trying to do something for the culture where they know they can rely on a brand. This brand is going to be always good because there's someone watching out, you know? And that's my motto, bro. You need to always be alert, especially something like cannabis, bro. It takes one day to like forget to turn the lights off or not feed the right feed, not plants down. <laughs> So finicky, so, so, so finicky and so gentle. So, um, you know, the plants are very, you know, you need to be, you need to be their father, their mother, you know, you have to be a, you have to be a caretaker. And if the growers are not, then they're not the right people for me. So it's been tough, but like I said, I'm glad I'm speaking to you guys because Arizona has been killing it. Um, yeah. We're always bringing new genetics. They're even like now at some point, they're introducing genetics to me. So anything that's in our jars, comes through me i have a good two weeks with it where it's, it's not like i smell it and say okay cool no i gotta smoke it i gotta see it because you know i want to know whatever because i hang out with it oh uh, yeah and because and, i'm doing this i have to yeah. let you know what i really feel not just fucking bullshit you you know because i don't believe in that shit anyways so yeah it's been tough but we're doing it bro and hopefully we'll scale some more but right now i'm trying to get cali back and it's working we got really good moves coming up soon here in cali az's good nevada's popping in june um so yeah man knock on wood it's looking bright i see the light at the end of the tunnel but there's always ups and downs like any other businessman it's a startup you, you know you got any uh any and, and and if you can't say you can't say i get it you got any other states you're uh you guys are looking to add to the I list could, i could say i'm looking towards florida michigan right now illinois and new york like that's those that's what i'm looking at um they've asked us to do colorado washington and stuff but i feel like it's oversaturated over there I don't want to jump in a pool and be a small fish, you know, a big ocean. I want to be a big fish in a small pond, you know. So I'm going to go try to hit those. Uh, we we already have feelers out and people want us. I just want to, like I said, bro, I don't want to spread myself too thin either, you know, yeah. because mm -hmm. our, we're, we're a boutique brand. We don't have 100 employees. We got like six to eight, you know, uh, in-house. So those guys will be spread thin if we if they have to regulate every state and make sure everything's going on so i'd rather like solidify these three make sure we're popping in all three then move to another state it, you know it's not but, like I am, right. but, but i'm starting the talks because i feel like it's yeah. happening like i said so in the next year hopefully we'll pop off in a couple of more states and um something going on right now which is pretty crazy i so i got nominated to judge the emerald cup this year Oh shit. Congrats, and so, man. yeah, I've been bombarded with scripts. <laughs> like right. my dream came true, but I feel like I bit off more than I could chew. It's like, be careful what you wish for. I just got a box, 10 boxes, like literally 10 boxes of 32 eighths in each box. It's 320 strains that we can go through. <laughs> Hey, my dude, hey, we'll help you. Yeah, bro. <laughs> all amazing, not all, but you know what I mean? Like from from homegrown, light depth, sun grown, greenhouse, indoor, Oh all sorts, God. all play, you know, because Cali is like lacking on a lot of sativas right now. And I have a bunch of sativas now, so I'm happy because that's what I like to smoke throughout the day, you know, because I work. So I can't be couch locked. 
you know? And then I at night, the, the, the cakes and the OGs come out. But right now, I'm, you know, so I'm happy. I was just going through it. I was like, I, I got to mention that because, and give em Emerald Cup the props because, you know, that they, they are the number one, man. They, they do kind of dictate what's coming up to the rest of the states, you know, what's going to be the next big straight. And I think I came across a couple of really good ones that just don't have names on them. I just got numbers. So, <laughs> you, know, you first so, thought oh, you don't know what they are because gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, we can't be biased, you know, because yeah. I might know what the grower is or someone might, you know. And um, but I recognize the few smells and some. There are some really good cultivators out there, bro. I'm not joking. Like I, I had some really nice nostalgic scents and feelings, like you know, because it's gotten a little generic in Southern Cali. You know, like strains have gotten genetic. They've just been like inbreeding all the strains. It's like, what what flavor of gelato would you like today? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the cherry runt or the lemon runt or the, they're all the same runs, by the way, bro. You know what these yeah. brands are doing? I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm not going to name them, the brands, but I'll tell you what they do, bro. They grow four strains, but they have 20 different fucking strains in the stores, but they're growing four. You know what I'm saying? The four strains they separate between the purple and the green, and the green gets a name, the purple gets a name, the purple green gets another name. Yeah, bro. And they're putting it on the stores and they're bullshitting their people, their patients, they're getting screwed. And that's what I'm seeing happen because I've been asked to do that. And I was, are you serious? Like, I'm not, no, bro. Like, is that something? Uh, that ain't it, fam. <laughs> so I know people doing that. I know big brands are doing that shit. Um, they scale on only doing four because you know they get each, each facility does one big strain, one good strain that yields a lot, and then they pick and choose which goes into what jar, and then they name each jar differently and put them into different stores. So you don't even know. You think you're getting a nice hybrid, you are, but it's the same strain as that other store that's named something totally different. Man, that's crazy. It is. What's be careful. Uh... Everybody be careful out there. That's it's, what's, it's turned into yeah. big, big business, bro, where they're, they they don't give a fuck about you, the smoker. They're just like, oh, they'll get high. They'll be happy because it looks all exotic. And, um, you know, I'm glad I didn't name anything because I usually just want to throw motherfuckers under the bus. But I'm not going <laughs> to. I mean, we're not opposed to it. Just like, <laughs> no, hey, hey, we we've been, do it we've been trying day. to keep it. We've been trying to keep it on the push and positive, too. Like, oh, it's out there. Be aware of it, but we ain't gonna name yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not exactly. I'm not a negative dude, but you know, we're talking our business, and we're talking like I could have been that consumer that gets screwed. You know, exactly. So, it bothers me. You know, exactly. Yeah. And that, and that's where we, that's where we're on it too. Where we like, well, like I don't want to go dragging people, but at the same time, like certain things we gotta let people know. Just yeah, that's responsible that's awareness part of the yeah. industry as a responsible part of the culture. It's awareness. It's it's, yeah. it's it's raising awareness. It's necessary. So I really and and not to kind of drastically change the subject, but to maybe shift gears a little bit. Like I I I'll, I one of the first things that I noticed about you when I started doing a little research was that you are actually original. Uh, you're Armenian, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you were not born in the states. You were born over there. I was born in Armenia in '74. I moved to America in '79. I was five. So years. my my mom's last name is Shenlugian. My my grandfather's first generation in Armenian. America. Well, rest in peace. Yes, Armenian. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he he was first generation over here. His parents moved over in you know the late eighteen early nineteen hundreds. I don't know the exact dates or anything. But mm -hmm. just just like when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like it, like just the uh, just that like kind of connection. The, and, and the culture and everything and knowing that there's a big population in Cal in California mm -hmm. my mom is from the east coast from New Jersey so that's like where I uh, grew up in the summers but when, I just thought it was yeah. go ahead. when we moved I was we moved east coast mm -hmm. I was we moved to Queens I was going to be a Queens okay. I was going to be an east I was going to talk like this you know I, I, <laughs> I, I wasn't going to be all LA uh, but my folks kind of split not split like that but my dad's, because we all, we, we migrated like with the entire family. I'm talking mm -hmm. uncle, dad's grandparents, everybody, 50 of us. So half the family moved West Coast, half stayed East Coast. And my mom stayed East Coast. My mom was really young and uh, she was in her early 20s. So she and her parents, you know, they were n not a word of English. So she, she, she was a linguist, like an English major. Like she, in Armenia, she studied languages. Mm -hmm. She already spoke English. I, she actually taught me English in Armenia. 
uh, oh, because she right. knew we were going to move at some point, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it was just to give me the life I have, bro, because over there, there's no possibility of that happening, especially at the time, because it was run by the Soviet Union. We were just a republic that had taken over us. Mm -hmm. We were in a country, and we were just a republic. Uh, so it, it was just to give the kids a better life and an opportunity to, like, work awesome. and 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 get rewarded for it because over there you could work and they don't they take your money away they say you can't make more money than that guy that's sitting around you know anyways so we moved to the east coast lived in queens for a bit and then i remember one day she's like we're gonna go see your dad i'm like fuck yeah i was five bro and uh, i remember the plane ride and then i remember growing up in la uh hold on i got another kid coming in i'm doing a podcast baby hi He's coming in. Sorry. That's cool. Hey, what's up, bud? <laughs> oh my God, how you doing? How you doing, he just, man? Uh, they're about to go see the Mario movie, so he wants to give me a hug. Uh, I'm going to go to Vegas. So I love you, baby. Go. I'll, I'll see you in a little bit. Go hey, ahead. have a good one. Enjoy the movie. Yeah, enjoy okay. the movie. He's see seen it once already. We saw it last week, and he, they're going again with their friends now. Hi, close. Looks awesome. like that. I love you. I was trying to go see it last night, but I couldn't convince the homies. We had to go see Creed Three, which yeah. wasn't. A movie I won't how's lie. that was it good it was good yeah i didn't see the other two to like really be yeah. following but like you know the mario was, shit's funny bro yeah right. jonathan funny majors he, he plays that i like jonathan majors like he plays his part very well like, bro the best is bowser bro fucking jack black that shit bro i i didn't expect to be busting up fall on the ground bro like i was there was moments where i'm, I'm not gonna give it up you know no no spoilers here but Bro, there was moments where I was just floored by how hilarious that dude is, bro. Like, I love that guy personally. And just to see him play a character that we're all familiar with, because I've been playing Mario since Mario, since Nintendo, since the right. arcade. It came out. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And, like, he does that turtle proud, bro. Like, he's so good. And yeah. all I'm, I'm going to say is moments where you're just crying. Because he, um, he gave him a character. He gave him his character. So it's like watching... I'm not gonna say it. it's it's a good movie. Go check yeah, it out. Go and, and it's, it's, really right. it's not like a three hour freaking epic shit. It's like hour and a half, you're done with it, you're like, fuck yeah, I'll watch it again. You know, I miss those days. It sounds yeah, like we're yeah. going to the movies. <laughs> yeah, let's go. You should go get 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 a little blazed and go, and you'll be fucking on the floor, bro. On the floor. So back sure. to the whole migration. We yeah, moved yeah. To, we moved to LA and I grew up on North Kingsley Drive in Hollywood, and uh, which I named my side project band with um after because it's kind of where i grew up kind of where i saw like i grew up in the streets of hollywood skateboarding until i picked up the guitar i was a skater from like five years old bro um i skate to venice beach at like 13 bro without my parents knowing from hollywood taking a bus skating some of it taking another bus you know whatever i could take 80 cents a bus yeah. back then. so it's so like i would just you know collect some loot and go and then i'd skate with some pro skaters because all they'd all be skating venice and santa monica learn some shit and then before nightfall come come home and then when yeah, the parents would ask what do you do what would you do uh i was at my friend's house yeah know? yo that was I, actually when, in venice <laughs> you know? my yeah. my grandparents had a beach house out in new jersey right so mm -hmm. every summer i grew up outside of chicago i'm in rockford illinois but every summer we'd go out to belmar uh to the jersey shore and when i was like 14 15 we would be like yeah mom we're going to the beach for the day and we joke hop on the train and we ride the train up to the city and go skateboard all day. You're like me, bro. Yeah, we were me. not allowed to go skateboard in the city when we were 15 know. years old. Like Hell that was no. a no starter. Yeah. But bro. like we, you know, we talk about it now and we all laugh about it because, you know, it was all good. But like, yeah, I grew up, I'm, I'm 40 now. So I grew up in the, basically in the late eighties, early nineties, I was born yeah. in 82. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. So with all that, I guess, how did you get into, I guess, the like the cannabis culture? Like, how was that with your family? Was that something you were open about with them? Or like, how did that and music all kind of like progress well, together? It went skateboarding, music, cannabis. So the music came in when I was like 11, 12. I mean, I was always a music fan, but because of the old country, my parents are old school. They were old school. They're totally mm -hmm. better now. They're advanced, you know? Right. um they get it but it was like you know he needs to be a lawyer a doctor an accountant you know dentist they didn't want me to be a musician They're, you know because you know it was a starving <laughs> musician you know they didn't want me to be a starving musician right and uh, so they wouldn't even get me an instrument and i was like dad I, I was seeing kiss on 
TV, like solid gold and shit. And I was seeing in Hollywood, they used to have murals of rock bands. And I was all about like, I'd collect all the circus rip uh, guitar world magazines. I'd, I have Motley Crue on my wall. I had Twisted Sister, Iron Maiden. I was listening to all that shit, but I always wanted to jam, but they wouldn't get me instruments. Then my grandma, I think it was a birthday. She kind of like sn snuck a guitar in, got me an electric guitar and that was it, bro. That was I, it. I like just fucking no lessons. I just, I never had lessons. I locked myself in a room all night long and just fucking jammed. I just, and then I got magazines that had little tablature in there. Mm -hmm. of songs like crazy train so i'd be like learning crazy train in my room by myself because i wanted to you know that was something it's like you're only going to get good at something if you want to do it and love doing it right yeah, if someone yeah. forced it upon me i'd be like oh, it's fucking homework or you know it's like a chore it's never a chore it was a pleasure you know so i did yeah. that and i didn't really smoke weed or do any drugs or nothing in my youth um my parents always like i said old school they always told me weed's the same as coke same as heroin same as whatever right Mm -hmm. And uh, as I grew, I realized it's not. And um, I remember the first time I took a puff was at the Guns N' Roses um, Metallica show in L.A. They had a show together at the Rose Bowl. Um, and there was someone smoking weed in front of us, you know, passing it. And I said, hey, man, pass it. As a joke, you know, it was like my friends were around me who don't smoke. And the dude went like that, like he passed it. And I, I looked around. I can't and back like, out now. Oh, it, was <laughs> it was like, fuck, do I do it? I said, fuck it. Let me grab it. Smoked it. I didn't feel much. Gave it. Everyone's like, damn, Shavo smoked weed, you know? And uh, then I kind of didn't smoke anymore for a little bit. But then it was like, if it was around, I'd take a hit, you know? And it was cool. And then I got comfortable with it. But it wasn't until System, where I started work, hanging out with Darren a lot. And Darren was an avid smoker, my guitar player. And um, we before we had a drummer, we had a, an idea of the band, a, like, the name of the band we had like the concept so we would we even had a studio we would go to the studio we'd go to alvarado down in east l.a buy nickel sacks because that's all we can afford of some like really fucked up weed uh <laughs> some seeds, you know and then we'd come back get get a 40 I'd, I'd get a 22 uh hence the 22 now um and um we just sit around and manifest bro we'd be like you know we're gonna do this it should be like this he'd show me a riff I'd show him something I've done and it, uh, we'd smoke weed and it just became a daily thing. And that's when I became a smoker. But it wasn't until like we were on tour where I became a connoisseur. Uh, I've told the story before, you might've heard it. We were in Amsterdam. I had been given a number of someone that they said like, forget all the coffee shops, this is the guy. You call this guy, the locals go there. I'm like, oh shit, okay. So I called this dude. It just happened to be Arian Roskam who's the founder, the fucking creator of the Super Silver Haze, the fucking White Widow, White Rhino. He's the guy. He's uh, He owns the Greenhouse Seed Company, Strain Hunters, King of Cannabis. Look him up. So I met the legend. Uh, he invited me to his shop. He's like, because I told him what I did and who I was. He didn't know system at the time. It was like 98, 99. And um, must have done some research. <laughs> Pulled out the red carpet for us when I got there. Handed me ounces of weed. And I was like, you know, I see a menu and you're giving me two strains. You know, we don't got strains. Like, we don't have a menu in the L.A. Have that at home. I was like, I'll take a little bit of everything you got. And he looked at me like, what? So you're like that? I go, yeah. So that weekend was the harvest tasting of all the new strains in, 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 in Amsterdam, including the Super Silver, White Widow, Neville Hayes, Aryan Hayes, all this like sick weed that we know now as legendary strains, uh, the Afghanis and all that shit. And he invited me to the tasting, bro. And I went to the tasting and I smoked for like 13, 14 hours, like at a dinner table, like a Thanksgiving dinner table with bowls of nugs with no names on it. Just like what happens now I got 320 of them, but at the time it was like 30 of them. And that was just, it blew my mind. And after that, it was just like, fuck, okay, I get it. It ain't I about mean, getting high. I, it's not just about getting high. That it's is a, it. you know, like you start tasting different smells, looks. So and you could pull it up. I they were filming, I think there's like 10 minutes of it on, on YouTube. If you pull up system getting high, you'll see what I'm talking about. We're at a, we're at a big table, weed everywhere we're smoking. Like I have nugs the size of my beard, I'm holding like that. <laughs> so it's pretty cool shit, bro. So that's when I became a connoisseur, and that's where I know when the time was right to do what we were doing with 22, that I could do it because right. I, 
done that and I've been through it and I know the difference. And it's not just getting high and making money. You know, it's about creating something new. I love to pheno hunt. I love that. Whenever I find a grower that wants to do that, I jump on board. We've done it many times and we're, we're, we're in one now. I'm looking for the next great strain though, you know? Yeah. So, so that, that's the story, yeah. That's how it all went down from, from Armenia to <laughs> Queens to Hollywood, skateboarding to music to weed there it is that, in that, a nutshell. That, that is a great story bro yeah there it is I was gonna say, it doesn't sound like it could get any better you know it's like <laughs> we going to amsterdam and having 30 like damn i couldn't yeah, even for imagine the first time. yeah for the first time you know it was a big deal and uh awesome. it, it, a lot of fun was had you know so my question is uh i'm going to circle back into your brand um, cause you said all, all the strains go through you, right? Anything that comes out goes through you. So me as a connoisseur, what do you think I should be looking for coming from 22 red? Now I'm a, I'm more of an indica guy, but like, uh, we'll just say for connoisseurs out there, whether it's new strains coming up or strains that are already been on the shelf that made, you know, an impact, like, what do you think people should be looking for strain wise? At the moment, I'm looking for some old school shit because, like I said, the inbred stuff is getting played out for me personally. So if it's got that gelato run smell, I'm not really a fan of it anymore. Uh, when it started, I was a big fan of it. Trust me, candy is great. You know, you smoke candy. And I, some of the old OGs are coming back. Yeah, thank God. We got this crazy OG from pre-98 coming out soon that we found the cuts and uh, from L.A., from like the original growers of the OG that we're going to bring to Arizona. Arizona hasn't seen OG like that yet. Um, it's from Oak Ridge. Um, it's the 22 OG that we started with here. But then we lost the cut. Then I just recently was reintroduced to the guy that gave me the cut four or five years ago. And he's like, I got you, bro. And I'm like, fuck, yeah, dude, because now we're in three states. Because we started in three dispensaries uh, four and a half <laughs> years ago. Now we're in three states. So I want to give everyone the love that we get here so look out for that look out for just authentic strains not inbred strains the nose on it really matters bro that the, the nose of the new smell and you know you know it's different it doesn't smell like every other jar you know yeah. um look wise i like a well cured well well trimmed bud i do you know uh, i like it to not be machine trimmed i hate that machine trim shit where it just yeah. like everything's gone it looks like a rock you know, I'm not into that. I like to have some leaves on it, a little bit here and there. I like to pick myself wet, sticky. You could do the, that test. You know that test. Sticks yeah, yeah, that feet. hang time. Yeah, yeah, the hang time. That's what it is. So yeah, I love sir. that. I'm just, you know, sharp. I, I, I like sharp flavors, you know, where it hits, your, hits right here, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. I could definitely yeah. relate. So, and I'm really looking for sativas right now, bro, because, you know, that's another business thing that is, sucks, you know, that really sucks because most people don't grow sativas anymore. Cause it doesn't yield and it takes longer. So they lose a harvest a year, but that's cause of money, you know, uh, fuck good sativas are great because it's all day smoke. You know, you could smoke and do this and, uh, run around and do business and be able to talk to people and instead of being like, okay, like, it matters what your job is. If you're talking yeah. weed and you're, it's, you're in that world and you can do it, do it. Me personally, like, everyone's brain is different and reacts different. Like, that's something else I learned in Arizona. In Cali, no, like Southern Cali, no one cares about Terps, bro. Northern Cali, they care. Arizona, you guys know your Terps, bro. You guys know what does what to. Like I walk through a lot of uh, dispensaries. I come there, I meet the workers, I meet the, I, I meet the owners. I, you know, I try to like shake hands and understand what they need so I could go find it and give it to them. And I see that they know. They're like, dude, like certain terpene in Maui Wawi does. Some people perfectly correct, like they're happy. They some people give them anxiety. You know, it just matters who you are. So, personally speaking, for me, I think sativas don't give me any anxiety. Uh, some people, it gives them, you know, it picks them up too much. I like it because it keeps me driven. You know, so I look for sativas now. Uh, the old hazes, you know. Oh yeah, the hazes. The hazes are dope, bro. Like that that day in amsterdam i discovered it, it was 90% sativa bro that shit don't exist 90 shit was out of this it was it was crazy it was uh, called neville's haze neville's See, haze 
See, 90% sativa does make me a little nervous because yeah. I think it will make me, I, I feel like it makes me a little jittery sometimes. Right. Like, I, used to really say, like, I started shaking. I used it. to really like sativas, but now I feel like I'm so used to indicas that I don't yeah. get pouch locked on indica that I there function. Yeah. And my brain is like rapid fire all the time. So See, like chemistry, I need yeah. something to kind of pull me back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I've I've found that if I smoke, like some sativas do me good. Like I, I I will not lie, I still will smoke some sativas, and I try them too because you always got to try what's out oh, yeah. just to see what's going on, right? You got to try the different flavors, see what's up. But like I find myself when I get too jittery on a sativa, it's like nah, that one's not for me. But it's for somebody. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. No, there's you know, like I said, bro, to each his own. And we're in a market where we're not only catering to ourselves, we're catering to others and you need to yeah, give everybody. Yeah. That's why we have such a variety in Arizona. We have over 20, 30 strains that we rotate. And now that we're with Lone Star, which is a grow that I saw a lot of potential in uh, and they were very state of the art. And like I said, I usually bring the genetics in. They actually had some really good genetics I hadn't seen before and they weren't inbred. So I was just like, okay, you know, if you can like give me that as like just me and you're not selling it to others under different names, like I'll take it. Right. And th that's where I'm at. And I, like I said, I love the variety. You ask personally, personally, sativa right now is my shit, but I'm not going to be smoking sativa like at 10 PM. I'm not doing that, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. OG or I'm hitting, hitting some kind of like, I like some of those cakes. They're really good, man. But it's just like, yeah, I just yeah. don't like too much gelato anymore. It's so much. I, it's a wonderful strain. There's no doubt about it. I mean, when that came out, you know, Sherbinsky, Mario, he came up with something amazing. And I'm not going to knock it ever. I just feel like what others did to the strain is what I'm not enjoying. Is when they took it and bred it so many times over that it lost with the original gelato. If you have a gelato 41 cut, like the original, all day I'll smoke that. Even if I don't, even if it's like, because it, that doesn't lock me. You know, it's a, it's it's an indica, but it doesn't lock me, and and it's flavorful, and the nose is like what he created was amazing and is amazing. It's just what they've done to it, you know. Also, there's you know there's um there's guys like Sea Junkies and all those guys that create wonderful strains, but those strains have also gotten inbred some, by others, you know. Mm -hmm. So you just you know it's you know any 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 kind of industry that turns to big business. It's bound to happen. Shit happens, yeah. You know, shit happens. And they say then, it all the time. They make a lot of Bud Light and a lot of people drink Bud Light. They do it. Yeah. <laughs> and no one's, and mids are being sold so cheap that people are like, why would I spend, like, premium weeds become like a holiday butt, you know, like, oh, I'll buy it for my boy for his birthday or Christmas, you know, but I'm going to smoke the booth, you know, because it's 10 bucks, a, 10 bucks a fucking out. I mean, um, you know, an eighth. So, mm -hmm. You know, it's like it my be 10 an ounce. You never know. <laughs> right. At some point, right? You never know. Shit's dropping, bro. $3,000 yeah. pounds are selling for that, fucking a grand. You know, 60 an ounce. I'm like, that's, yeah. They used to be, I used to pay 600 an ounce, bro, in LA to get the great bug. Like before, yep. before the, it dropped, it was five grand a pound back in the day, bro. You know, and now it's like, I heard in Arizona, I was just talking to my people there. They're like, dude, like, Two thousand dollar pounds are now six fifty. I'm like six fifty. That's insane, you know. But um, hey, awesome. It's got to go down to go back up, you know. So yeah. yeah. So so you uh, I'm I'm excited to look for this OG that you're gonna have coming out to AZ. Um, oh yeah. Do you have any Do you have anything planned on you personally being out in AZ anytime? Soon? Uh, I might surprise. 420. I'm not sure. I'm talking right now. It's in a week, in a week and a half. Uh, my birthday is 422. So I got a, that, you know, it's also 420. You know? That's the 22. I, I always say my birthday is also for because it's 420 also, you know? <laughs> so uh, I, I'm with I, that all you know, day. <laughs> so yeah. So we usually do our events 422 because, you know, everyone does it on 420. So two days later, not too many people are doing big events and sales and shit. So we'll do it then. But I got to be here for my birthday, so I'm thinking we do an event there in AZ on 420. I'm, I'm going to try to roll up. So let's see what happens. Yeah. I just got so many trips, and then we got our show. Systems got that show in May in uh, Vegas. We're, we're doing the Sick New World um, big festival headlining it. So I, I uh -huh. have rehearsals, and uh, I'm, I, I haven't played with System for about a year. 
year and a half. You got to get back into. I got to learn 30 some songs again. Like not learn, but like refresh, you know. Right, like, right, right. A muscle, you know, you got to remember. No good you. enough to go out and play them on tour. Not yet. We're not on tour, yet. but. So we're, I was talking to Darren. I was like, let's do the set list. And yesterday and figuring out what songs we should play. And it's not like we can only play 10 songs. It's like we're, we're doing 27, 30 songs now because we're headlining. Shit. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And that's like a lot for the stoner brain, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and it ain't like three chord songs, you know, like intricate shit, you know? Yeah, bro. So, you know, we got like 10 changes in every song. So, you know. That's dope. You know. Well, happy yeah. early birthday for sure, for sure. Thank you, yeah. brother. Thank you. And, I, out, you know, we want to we want to oh, link up with you for sure. For sure. Let's do that. Like, we'll know. I know you talked to Alexa, my pub, publicist, I think, or I don't know how we got to do this. Yeah, Keep yeah. in touch. If I'm coming, I'd love to meet you guys. You guys are dope. Absolutely, awesome. we appreciate you know? that. Likewise, right. man. One thing I want to pump real quick. So, music-wise, yeah, yeah. as I've had downtime, I've made a record with two other guys called North Kingsley. It's like a fusion of. It's not rap rock, but it's like is this. That like, RZA? No, that's the RZA. Oh, okay. That one is. We haven't dropped that. That's done. It's been done for 10, 15 years now, bro. We just haven't dropped it. It's just there's a lot of. <laughs> It's I, such I, a beautiful record, and I'm saying that not because I'm a part of it. It's just he drops some of the best lyrics and shit I've ever heard him drop. And I'm the biggest Rizzo fan. He's my best friend, but I'm his kid was my ring boy. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay. I'm, I was intrigued by the shit he said on that record, and it was like knowledge. It's called a chosen, and there's no cussing. It's like just every rapper that came in, lyricist that came in, I said, yo, give me some knowledge. Give me something your grandpa, your dad taught you, your mom taught you. Give me something so the kids could pop that in and listen and get knowledge out of it. And we did it, bro. So it will be coming out. We just don't know how to drop it because there's some people on the record that there's some, I don't know what's going on. There's some beef going on on that side of the world. That's not me. So, th so there's a lot of politics involved, but I've got the music and I'm just, I can't wait. And I think it's timeless. I'm not worried. It's not like oh, it was big then. It would have been big now when I feel right. like. And for a shit that I, oh, it was made in 07. It was early. It was made before it's time. Cause it says like elect electronic hip hop beats that I made that now people are doing. But back then it was like, fuck, what is that? You know? But um, the, the project right. I'm talking about is called North Kingsley. And it's live bass, live guitar over trap beats with really good lyrics, really cool vibes. It's an experimental project, it's like, a, like an abstract painting with music. And then I've been working on also a solo metal hardcore record that I'm going to get a bunch of features from like peers of mine uh, and the youngins and then get a singer so I can take it on tour. So I'm just like, I'm working, bro. You know, I'm enjoying staying busy. And I got three fucking kids, so, <laughs> you know, and I got them on my side. So, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. So, well, hey, you got pleasure. anything else? No, I bro. You, I know you're out. Out, on a tight window, so we don't. Yeah, I'm flying out in an hour. Flight. In one hour, my flight takes off, and I'm going on a, on the the JSX shit. So, I, sh I should be okay. But I'm gonna run from here, put my shoes on, and get to the airport. Hell awesome, yeah, man. man. Thank hell you yeah. so much for coming and hanging out with us and you making some time for us. It was a pleasure meeting you and, and getting to chop it up with you and really laugh and have a good time. Oh, yeah, um, definitely I could kick it with you guys, bro. No joke. I, we can hang. I, I could tell. <laughs> we, yeah. we should. We should kick it and have some, smoke some, taste some. Yeah, dude, I grew some shit. I'd love for you to taste it. Like, Well, listen, man, like I said, keep in touch. Let me know. So if I do come down, we could meet up. Absolutely. That'd be dope. But I do I come often, so... If I don't come now, I'll be coming soon. You know, I'm there once a month at least. So okay, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Let's do this because I got to do this. That's the flight. That's the flight. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. All right, man. All right, man. Have, have a man. safe flight. We'll me. talk to you later. Peace, bro. Thank you. Yes, sir. Peace. Thank you so much, be man. Be good, guys. Be good. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Later, guys. Bye. Bye.